Hello, it's Dr. Machu for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the following course and the following lectures, we will talk about a very complicated topic from my point of view. We will talk about diastolic dysfunction. There are many measurements to understand and diastole is rather complex. So we will discuss what diastole and diastolic function is all about. Well, diastolic dysfunction is the combination of inadequate filling and relaxation of the left ventricle, reduced LF function, and the therefore resulting elevated filling pressures of the left ventricle. Overall, in diastolic dysfunction, why should we measure diastolic dysfunction? Well, in case of heart failure, the so-called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, diastolic dysfunction and the stiff hearts play as an essential role. Furthermore, it can be responsible for dyspnea, so patients with diastolic dysfunction can be symptomatic. You can find peripheral edema. It gives a lot of information about the prognosis of the patient. And we have to always think that patients with diastolic dysfunction might have a reduced exercise capacity. To summarize, the older the people get, the older our patients get, the stiffer the hearts are and the more severe diastolic dysfunction will be. Per definition, I already mentioned it, we have normally stiff, small hearts or at least small cavities of the left ventricle. We can see a systolic dysfunction, so every patient with a systolic dysfunction must have a diastolic dysfunction or there can be simply atrial dysfunction and all those factors contribute to elevated filling pressures of the left ventricle. It's very important and never forget that every systolic dysfunction is associated with a diastolic dysfunction. Then it's a matter of grading left ventricular filling pressures. And of course, diastolic dysfunction is often associated with reduced longitudinal dysfunction of the left ventricle, not necessarily with a reduced ejection fraction. Here I brought you a nice graphic where you can see that global longitudinal function measured by strain imaging is reduced in heart failure patients with preserved ejection fraction. You can see here all the values from minus 31 to zero and in the range of minus 18 to minus 22, minus 23, that is a normal global longitudinal strain. In between minus 16 to minus 18, the little bit darker area, this is borderline, so could be reduced longitudinal function of the left ventricle. And below 16 is definitely pathological. And what we can see here most is that many patients with heart failure in preserved ejection fraction, so the dark blue columns, they have a reduced global longitudinal strain. Now is the question, why should we measure diastolic dysfunction? Well, it's important for monitoring patients also for understanding the individual prognosis of a patient. Just imagine a patient with severe diastolic dysfunction will have more dyspnea, more hospitalizations, and of course a worse prognosis compared to a patient with normal left ventricular filling pressures. And sometimes diastolic dysfunction can point us towards another underlying cause of the possible diseases this patient might have. What is pathological, what is normal, there are two measurements or two pressures we have to remember. That's first the PCWP, that's the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Above 12 millimeters of mercury, it's pathological. And the left ventricular and diastolic pressure, which is normal below the value of 16 millimeters of mercury. So keep those two numbers in mind because those are the numbers we have to remember if we talk about elevated filling pressures. Before we start to perform echocardiographic measurements, we have to understand the hemodynamics. In case of hemodynamics, first of all, there will be an elevated left atrial pressure. The left atrium is a low pressure system. So if the pressures in the left atrium will rise, it will lead to, uh, furthermore, a pulmonary hypertension. So Elevated left atrial pressures lead to pulmonary hypertension. And in case of pulmonary hypertension, we will have right ventricular dysfunction and dyspnea in the sequel of pulmonary hypertension. 
And when we have right ventricular dysfunction, probably right ventricular dilatation, a dyspneic patient, also tricuspid regurgitation will be more severe compared to a normal functioning right ventricle. To summarize this first lecture, let's have a look at possible causes of diastolic dysfunction. It's not only the hypertensive heart disease where you might think about diastolic dysfunction, but of course it's an important factor, so hypertension and cardiac remodeling, but also obesity, diabetes, elderly patients, as mentioned before, so aging population, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with mild reduced ejection fraction have diastolic dysfunction. Patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and restrictive cardiomyopathy might have diastolic dysfunction. Patients with coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease and left bundle branch block or pacing can show signs and symptoms of diastolic dysfunction. In the next lectures, we will continue with specific echocardiographic imaging of diastolic dysfunction.